Hi guys, welcome to this video. My name is Evans and in this video guys, I'm going to be introducing you to programming for the web. This is for the information technology uh, A level uh, 9626 um, syllabus and we will be looking at how you can apply uh, JavaScript to your HTML code. So without wasting much of our time, let's go uh, quickly with just an introduction to what JavaScript is. So JavaScript basically is uh, a programming language, okay? Just like other programming language, although this language is specifically used for making web pages interactive, okay? So it is object-based and it is executed on the client's or user's uh, site. Now, the, the, the idea here is that JavaScript is actually executed on the browser that you're using. So if you have your like your Chrome or your fire uh, folks or your internet explorer um the code that you you know you run for javascript is actually executed um from your browser okay so it's not executed from the server side of uh, of things okay so um javascript is an interpreted language if you remember if you've done um compilers in uh, translators um or interpreters you know that uh, you have got two types of translators, compilers and interpreters. So JavaScript is an interpreted language, okay, uh, which means line by line uh, code will be executed and interpreted uh, and then um, executed. Um, so JavaScript is not Java that, again, you should understand that's very key. Uh, these are totally two different languages and uh, they are not the same in any way. Uh, also, uh, Java is a complex programming language um, compared to JavaScript. Okay, with Java you can go ahead and create uh, uh, even desktop application. You can create mobile application and so on and so forth. So Java is basically in the category as um, um, C plus plus, Python, uh, or Visual Basic. Okay, and then JavaScript is basically just a scripting language. All right. Now, the other thing, guys, that I would want you to know is about the programming fundamentals. If you're coming from a background, maybe you've got some background of programming, maybe Python or Visual Basic or whatever, this should make so much sense in terms of what you should be understanding or looking out for as a programmer or something that would be very common when you do programming uh, of some sort, okay? So I've listed a number of things here, guys, that um, you will oftentimes encounter as a programmer things like variables things like arrays things like functions events um uh, data types conditionals or comparisons or operators okay now these are things that are very common as a programmer you would have encountered already uh, a number of these uh, stuff here okay now i'm not saying now you know get worried that you don't know any of this stuff uh, this is why you're learning this language javascript uh, you will see how we're going to be using uh, these. I'll be telling you that now we are doing this, or now we are creating a variable, now we are creating an array, now we are creating a function, now we're creating conditional statements and so on and so forth. I'll be guiding you every now and then uh, as we progress through the um, the course, okay? So one thing, guys, that I would like to mention here is that, I mean, this is just the theory side of it. I'm going to be introducing you shortly um, to... Um, the programming side of it will be doing more of problem solving and you know tackling and applying some of these concepts to real life concepts so that you really have a good understanding of what you're supposed to be um to be to be doing okay so um what you would need to be able to run your javascript of course you need an updated uh, browser uh it could be chrome could be firefox um, uh, internet explorer or even safari uh, or Opera. Uh, but just make sure that you have an updated and uh, not not that virus. <laughs> yeah, you make sure you have an updated browser. Okay, you know sometimes when you hear updated, 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 everybody what just comes to mind is that virus and virus and virus. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because it's a world full of viruses, COVID nineteen and so on and so forth. Okay, never mind. All right, so. Um, if you compare JavaScript and HTML, again, these are totally two, um, or they are two, totally two different languages. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So, um, JavaScript and HTML are different languages. HTML is a markup language. Uh, JavaScript is actually a programming or scripting language. Um, JavaScript is written inside the HTML. So basically you have your HTML, um, um, giving you the structure of your web page. 
and then your JavaScript is going to come and give you the behavior of your web page. Now, guys, if you remember from uh, the layers of um, a web page, uh, a web page is actually divided into three layers. You've got um, what is known as the presentation layer, and this is where you're going to find your um, your appearance of your web page. This is the cascading style sheets or your CSS. Okay, this is things like the color, the font sizes, the um, the formatting of the pages, center aligned, left aligned, and so on and so forth. This is going to be found in the uh, presentation layer, which is the cascading style sheet that you're going to be creating. Um, the HTML is going to be found in the content layer. This is where your tables and your uh, your images, your videos, your audio, uh, your text, and all these other stuff is going to be found uh, in the content layer. Then you have the behavior layer. This is where you're going to find your JavaScript code. This is where you find things like um, what happens when you click on a button, what happens when you hover a mouse on a button, um, um, what uh, event is going to take place maybe when the user or when a condition has been met and so on and so forth. So JavaScript actually brings the interactivity uh, onto your web page. Otherwise, without JavaScript, your web page is just a static web page just for displayed information. But if you want your users to interact with your website, basically then you're going to embed some JavaScript code in one or the other into your HTML document, okay? So what can you do with JavaScript, okay? Now, guys, there are so many things that you can do with JavaScript. Uh, some of them is that you can create things like cookies um, uh, for your applications. Um, you can detect the versions of browsers. Um, you can validate forms, for example, passwords and, and so on and so forth. Check the date formats, maybe. Uh, you can create animations or slideshows or scrollers. Maybe you guys have visited some web pages before uh, where you saw maybe some animation on the web page or some scrollers or slideshows on the web page, uh, some pictures shuffling around. Uh, that could be JavaScript powering that in the background. Okay. So basically, uh, when you talk about JavaScript, it is basically going to be embedded in the HTML uh, web page or in the HTML tags. So you have something like this. You have the H, uh, open tag and close tag for the HTML. You have the body tag for the HTML. And inside that, you might have a script. So I put that in blue script, which means you're starting a JavaScript code. And what's going to come inside the script, this is going to be purely JavaScript. Okay. Now, um, this can come uh, either you know, inside the body tag, or it can even come after the body tag, but before the HTML tag. Okay, so um, that's that's fine. Um, so um, what I want to introduce you before I close this video, guys, uh, what I want to introduce to you is how you can print on the screen using JavaScript. Okay, now this is going to be a very important statement because oftentimes as you'll be working with the um, in the exam, um, it's almost inevitable that you're going to be printing something JavaScript on the screen. So it's it's very important that you know how to print on the screen uh, using JavaScript, okay? So there are basically two ways that you can use um, to print documents or to print uh, uh, whatever resource that or information you want to print on the screen. There are basically two ways that you can do that. Uh, one of the ways is you're going to use a, um, a function called um, document.write. And um, this one basically is just going to, you know, take in some argument and you know just print it out as it is on the screen okay the argument could be um a string or could be a variable and it may attempt to try you know to print it out on the screen as it is but you will see how we're going to apply this to a real uh, real life uh, situation okay you can also use the dot in a html this is going to be a very useful uh, statement to use um in your uh, exam um, uh, these are uh, two popular ways that you're going to be printing statements in your in your um, JavaScript. So, again, if you use the document dot write, the the catch with this one is that you have not specified, you have not chosen what spot, what point on your web page you want to print whatever you want to print. So, if you use document dot write. The system is going to just you know pick up whatever the control is and then print something 
at that spot okay so the control could be you know after executing certain lines of code and then there's nothing more to execute before it can count as the document or write statement and then next it just prints whatever statement is supposed to uh, to print using the document or write statement so that's why i'm saying here that um it, it will just depend with the, where the control is um um in your program and by control guys um for some of you that may know not know what the control is it's basically when your program is executing certain lines of code okay the last line that it executes uh i mean before it executes it goes to the next line uh that last point is where the control is when it's excuse the next line the control shifts and goes to the next line when it's excuse another line the control shifts and go to the next line so at the exact point where your program is as it is running that is known as the control okay so the document of right basically will just take in a parameter or an argument and it will just print whatever it receives on the screen so it could receive a string like hello world it could receive a variable uh, but you'll see later on how we can use this uh, to print on the screen now the most important one is actually is the uh, uh, .inner HTML. This is one of the one uh, one of the most useful um, uh, methods of printing onto the screen. Um, it's such a powerful statement because it allows you to pinpoint exactly where you want to print, um, you know, your statements. You need to choose where you want to put your statements, and um, you need to create sort of a name or an alias where you want to put um the 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 information that you want to put okay and then um uh, for example if you are, if i was using a paragraph tag in raid i can create an id for that paragraph tag called paragraph one and then uh, um in my javascript i'm just going to refer to the name of that paragraph which is paragraph one so i'll create a script something like this and then inside the script i'll just say document.get element by id and then pass the name of the id which i am I'm, I'm, I'm looking at so get element by id now we say refer to that id what is the id paragraph one and then use the dot in html at that spot can you allocate this text or this string called hello world so what will happen is that where that paragraph one has been defined in my html it will pull from a JavaScript code, hello world, and print it where my um, paragraph tag is. Now, this will make so much sense, guys, when we um, we actually write some code. Uh, and for this reason, um, let's, let, let's write some, uh, some code so that we really have a good understanding. So I'm gonna just, you know, maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a new video and then uh, we'll put up just some questions and then we can look at how you can use um, the, um, the inner uh, HTML as well as the uh, document or write um, a function to see how we can print on the screen. All right, guys, so join me shortly in the next video.